Hello and welcome to the beautiful Rosendale Valley. episode 2 of Geography of the Rosendale Valley. In this episode we're going to learn about rivers. The main river that we're going to look at today is the River Irwell, which is here next to me. This flows all the way down from Bacup all the way through the Rosendale Valley and then ends up in Manchester. But how exactly did this river form and how did it get here? In this episode we're going to go back thousands of years to the times of the Neolithic and look at exactly where this river came from. Here we have a map of the River Irwell. The Irwell source is up in Rosendale. This then flows south past Ramsbottom, past Bury, and snakes its way until it gets to Manchester. So our river flows south. But why doesn't it just flow straight south? Why does it have this distinct pattern where it flows towards the west and then rapidly change direction towards the south, zigzagging past Radcliffe and into Manchester? Now this is because our river follows a valley. Now this valley wasn't just formed by the river, it was formed by ice as well. We now need to go back to the ice age and look at how do we know this. So the UK would have been covered by glaciers over 10,000 years ago in the pre last ice age that we have. The extent of the glaciers is shown on this map here. The areas that are in light blue would have been covered completely in ice. This would have been the ice sheet which would have extended down from the North Pole. Now Rosendale is located here. So we're at the southern extent of the ice sheet. We know this because just to the south of the Rosendale Valley there are large deposits of glacial sediment. This is big rocks and boulders which have been dropped by the glaciers and the ice sheet when it melted. So if this ice wouldn't have been there, we would not find this glacial deposit, this, all these big boulders that have been dropped by our glaciers. When they've transported them down from the north of Scotland down to the Rosendale Valley. Now what do these glaciers look like? Now we have glaciers today. We have an image here which shows what a glacier would look like. It would come down the middle of our valley where our river is now and it would erode our valley sides, making it deeper and wider. And then when it got to the bottom of the valley, where it's warmer, temperatures have risen, the ice would melt and therefore deposit the glacial sediment that it's transported. So at the end of the Rosendale Valley, we know this. So we've walked to the glacial pass of the UK. And where we are in the Rosendale Valley, we would have been under miles of ice, which is a very strange thing to think about. There would be nothing here at all, no vegetation, no nothing, because all we'll be covered in is ice and glaciers. But how does this happen? How do ice ages exist? Now the main reason behind causing an ice age is this big ball of energy in the sky, the sun. So let's have a look at now how the sun impacts ice ages. So we know that the earth orbits around the sun, but something that we've recently discovered is that this orbit is not always the same. It changes. So the change in the Earth's orbit is called eccentricity. The Earth's orbit is not fully circular. It's more of an oval shape. Every 100,000 years, this changes. It goes from a more circular shape to an even more oval shape. And then it will swap back 100,000 years later. When the Earth is in an orbit which is more circular, we have warmer conditions because the Earth is all the time closer to the Sun. However, when the Earth's orbit becomes more oval, it travels further away from the Sun at some points. 
And when that happens, that's when we enter our ice age, because global temperatures drop because it's taking a lot longer for the sun's energy to reach the Earth. Now we know this from looking at ice samples found at the North and South Pole. These ice samples give us a clearer idea exactly what the temperatures were relative to today and look at when ice ages have occurred in the past. Let's have a look at this now. So here we have our graph which shows the temperature of the Earth over the past 400,000 years. We can see that every 100,000 years we do have changes in the temperatures. The times where it's warmer when the Earth's orbit is more circular and the Earth is closer to the Sun at all parts of the year, we're interclacials, where temperatures are warmer and they're on average every 100,000 years. So we can see we're about 25,000 years here ago, up to 125,000 years where the next one occurs. Between this time, we have our more oval orbit, where at parts of the year, the Earth is a lot further away from the Sun. Therefore, the sun's energy cannot reach the Earth in a quick time, so it is much cooler. This causes our ice ages and our ice sheets to grow, so that the UK would be completely covered in ice. These last every 100,000 years, and then we have our interglacial, when the Earth's orbit becomes more circular. As you can see, present day, which is zero, we are in an interglacial. We're not in an ice age. We're in a period of warm weather. However, in a few thousand years time, you may see the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit change again and become more oval, and therefore we will dip into another ice age. So we've just finished looking at solar cycles to how ice ages form. But why does it have to be ice that's formed this huge valley? Why can't it just be water on its own? Let's just have a look at an experiment now showing how glaciers carve valleys like the one behind me. So here we have our experiment which shows how glaciers have shaped the valley so we have deep u-shaped valleys that we can see today each piece of equipment here represents a different part of the valley or a different climatic condition that has shaped the valley so let's first of all start with a cake this is the valley itself thousands of years ago it would have been a large area of flat upland area it wouldn't have been have a valley carved through it it would have just been upland and flat you would have had small ruts in the middle of it which would have collected rainwater so that's why we have a small indentation in the top of our valley we have a jug of water here which will represent our rainfall we have a ball of ice which will represent our glaciers later on and we also have a knife and an ice cream scoop we'll come to these two later on so first of all we're going to see thousands of years ago what would happen in the valley when rainfall falls so let's have a close-up of that now so thousands of years ago when we just had our upland area of the valley with small indentation when water was to fall on the valley it would collect in the middle as we can see now and some of it would flow at the bottom so there would have been a small river small streams flowing on the top of this high plateau upland area that's mostly flat and where this water gathered would be the start of the valley. However, this water, you can see, is just gathering in the middle of the valley itself. It doesn't gather anywhere else, just in the middle. So this valley, from the water itself, would just erode down the middle. Because this is where the water is, and the water is what causes the erosion of the valley. So there'll just be vertical erosion straight down. This will create deep v-shaped valley with steep valley sides and a narrow bottom let's have a look at that now so our east v-shaped valley has been formed by vertical erosion by our river and we can see when precipitation falls in our valley it flows down the center of our valley and then we'll gather in the ocean at the end however the water is still sticking in the middle of the valley and just eroding vertically downwards. So you're not really getting any lateral erosion on the valley sides. Now our ice age is upon us. Global temperatures have decreased rapidly. This means that water that was once flowing in rivers now becomes frozen. 
on our river valleys become full of ice. This is happening to our Rosendale Valley here. So let's see what happens now. So now our river valley is full of ice. The ice is in contact not only with the valley floor, but also the sides of the valley too. This ice is not stationary. It can move downhill under gravity. So therefore it is a glacier. I represent, if I do tilt the valley slightly, you can see the ice can move down under gravity. So as this ice is moving down under gravity, we're not just getting erosion on the valley floor now we're getting erosion along the valley sides as well. So the valley becomes deeper and becomes wider too. And rather it being a U shape, it turns into a V shape. The way we're gonna represent our erosion of our glacier is using the ice cream scoop. Because this ice cream scoop, can, not like the knife, that can only erode straight down, the ice cream scoop can erode at the sides too. Let's now have a look what happens when the ice cream scoop, i.e. the glacier, erodes our valley. So we're looking straight down our V-shaped valley. It's just been eroded by the river up until this point. However, we're in our ice age, it's now full of ice, and this ice erodes the valley sides and the valley bottom. So here we have our glacier, represented by our ice cream scoop. We can see on the glacier, unlike the knife, which had a sharp edge at the bottom, this has a wide bottom and also has the sides too, which can erode at the sides. So unlike the river, we're going to have erosion on the base of the valley and the sides too. So the river was only eroding the base, our glacier can erode the sides. Let's have a look at how it does that. So our glacier will form at the top of the valley, but as the ice is coming down, it can erode the valley sides too, steepening them, making them more vertical, and also widening the valley floor. So when our glacier is removed, we can see our valley has drastically changed shape. The valley floor is much wider and flatter. The valley sides are further apart and they're steeper they're almost vertical. So by doing this, our glacier not only deepens the valley, it widens it too. And it continues with this process and will continue to erode the sides, making it wider as more ice comes down the valley. It will continue to make it deeper through abrasion on the valley floor. And this process will have continued until the ice disappeared at the end of the ice age. So we've come to the end of our ice age now, our glacier is completely gone and will start to melt and we'll leave this shaped valley behind. A U-shaped, excuse me, a U-shaped valley, not a V-shaped valley. Let's have a look now what happens in the U-shaped valley in modern day. So we're now in modern day, our glacier has disappeared and we've got our U-shaped valley. We have precipitation in modern day, but it's no longer snowfall really, apart from in winter, we mostly have rainfall. So when our rainfall falls in our valley, it falls down the valley in the form of a river. And again, it's flowing down the centre of the valley, not the valley sides. So now we've just got vertical erosion happening again in our valley, making it deeper. And it's not getting any wider as it stands, as we've no longer got the glacier here, which can have lateral erosion on the valley sides, making them steeper and making the valley wider. And that's how glaciers have helped form our valley that we see today. So there we have it, our finished product, our U-shaped valley. Our glacier has now disappeared, but what it did is left behind. We've got our steep valley sides, our flat valley floor. The river it has been left behind and that has continued to erode, but those processes are completely different to those shown by the glacier. Please join me next time when we look at them processes and how they're impacting our lives today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.